Hi, my name is Reagan, and today we're going to be doing experiment four, stoichiometry of reactions and solution. Today we're going to be doing four titrations using acids and bases. A titration is a uh, method in chemistry where we have a set amount of a reactant in an Erlenmeyer flask that we place below the burette. We can then fill the burette with another reactant and then add it dropwise to our flask in order to find the midpoint or the point at which all of the reactant in the flask has reacted with all with enough reactant in the burette. In so doing, we can always know how much we have in our flask and we can measure how much reactant we have added to the solution. By using a titration, we can then calculate the stoichiometry of the two reactants and find its balanced equation. Today we're going to be using phenolphthalein indicator as well in order to indicate the midpoint, which is a pH of 7. Before we start the experiment, we need to remember lab safety protocol. We need to make sure that we're wearing a lab coat that is buttoned all the way up with no skin showing below the waist. That includes pants that extend all the way down to the shoes and closed-toed shoes as well. Please remember not to have your ankle showing in the lab. We also need to wear goggles, gloves, and have any loose hair tied back so as not to interfere with the experiment. Please also remember not to smell or taste any of the chemicals in the lab. And please do not eat food or drink any water in the lab as well. For this lab, we're going to be using a burette and also a volumetric pipette in order to measure out the reactants for this reaction. In order to use a volumetric pipette, you first need to rinse it three times with your um, solution. So that way it's clean and so that the volumes will be accurate. To use a volumetric pipette, you first need to add a bowl for this pipette pump and um, then you can draw up some solution from a beaker. You never want to draw up the solution from your stock bottle itself because you may contaminate it if you do so. So first we will add some of our solution to a Erlenmeyer flask and then we will pull up some of the solution into our pipette. And then we can turn it on its side and just uh, rinse the pipette with our solution. You need to do that two more times for three times total in order to rinse the, the pipette for our reaction. Next, you can take your solution again and draw up and draw it up into the volumetric pipette using your pump until it reaches the small line that's above the bowl. On this pipette, it's about an inch above the end of that large diameter space. Once you have it even with the line, you then need to release it into an Erlenmeyer flask where the reaction will take place. Next, we're going to need to uh, rinse the burette with our basic solution. So for this first experiment, we're going to be able, we're going to be using 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. And once again, we don't want to add it to our solution with the stock bottle in case we spill it. So we're going to first put it in a small beaker. To rinse the burette, we only need maybe 10 milliliters. You need to make sure the valve is closed and then you can add the solution to your burette using the beaker or using a funnel. Once you have added it to your burette, you can then move it to the side, holding the opening above a waste container and then slowly rolling it in your fingers to rinse the burette on all of its inside surfaces. You can then dump it out into your waste container. You'll need to do that two more times in order to sufficiently rinse your burette for our experiment. So once your burette is rinsed, you can then put it back on the burette stand and then place your funnel in the burette. And ensuring that the valve is closed, add your sodium hydroxide solution to a small beaker. You'll only need, you'll need about 40 to 50 milliliters to fill the burette. And then pouring it into the funnel.
Since these solutions have the same molarity and it's a one-to-one -one ratio for the stoichiometry, I know that it will only take about 10 milliliters for this reaction to complete. So you don't need to fill the burette all the way to the zero. What you can do is just fill it up until it's sufficiently full for the two reactions we're going to do, which is 20 milliliters in total, or 30 milliliters, and then measure the um, beginning point on the side with the gradations. So once your burette is full, we then need to add two drops of our indicator, which is phenolphthalein, to our Erlenmeyer flask before we start the titration. As you can see, there's no color yet because in acidic solutions, our phenolphthalein indicator is clear. But once we add enough base to reach the end point, it will be a faint pink color, and that's when you need to stop the titration. So to begin the titration, we're going to be adding our sodium hydroxide solution to our flask dropwise. You don't want to add too much too quickly or else you'll miss the end point of the titration. As you can see, there's some pink that, color that forms in the solution as the sodium hydroxide reacts with the phenolphthalein. But when I mix it together, that pink color disappears. As you get closer to the end point, you'll notice that the pink color that is very faint sticks around for longer as you swirl the solution. So this one will only probably need one more drop until we reach the end point. And there is the end point of the solution. As you can see, the pink color is faint. I have not added too much uh, base to the solution and it is persistent. No amount of swirling will make it go back to clear. So now that we know we've reached the end point of the uh, titration, we can then determine by reading the gradations on the side of the burette how much we have added by subtracting the final volume from the, or the initial volume from the final volume. We can then use that information to calculate the stoichiometry of this reaction. The next experiment will be using sodium hydroxide as the base again in the burette, but this time we're going to be titrating into a solution of sulfuric acid. So let's prepare that now. Before we begin, we need to rinse our volumetric pipette again, but this time with 0.1 molar sulfuric acid. Once you have rinsed the, the volumetric pipette three times, you can then draw up your solution until it reaches the line that is just above the bowl. If you overshoot the line, make sure that you discard the drops that will, the extra drops into a waste beaker and not into your, um, your solution so that you do not contaminate it. Once you have reached the line, we can then add that into our Erlenmeyer flask for the titration. Followed by two drops of our indicator. Before we start, we need to record the starting volume in our burette and then once again slowly add the solution in the burette to our Erlenmeyer flask dropwise. We have now reached the end point of our titration. So once again, we need to record the final volume of the, uh, on the burette and then subtract the initial volume in order to determine how much volume we have added. We can then use our numbers and the concentrations of our solutions to determine the stoichiometry of this reaction that we have now concluded. So for the third part of this experiment, we're going to be repeating the titration, but this time we're going to be using ammonium hydroxide as our base and sulfuric acid as our acid. So once again, you'll need to rinse your volumetric pipette before adding the acid to your Erlenmeyer flask. 
We've already rinsed this one, so we're going to measure out all our sulfuric acid. 10 milliliters. And then add it to our Erlenmeyer flask. We can then add two drops of our indicator. And then after recording the starting uh, volume of our titration, we can begin to add base to our sulfuric acid solution. Once we have reached this faint pink color, we know that the uh, reaction has come to its end. We can then record our ending uh, volume on our burette and subtracting the initial volume that we can then find how much uh, solution we have added to our flask. And for the last experiment, we'll be doing the same titration, but this time we'll be using some ammonium hydroxide in our burette and hydrochloric acid in our flask. I have already added the 10 milliliters of hydro hydrochloric acid and the uh, phenyl thaline indicator. So we can now start our titration. Once you have reached a faint pink color, you are at the end point of your titration and you can record the final volume on your burette and then proceed to do the calculations. If you have any other further questions or need help in your lab, please ask your TA for help. They'll be happy to help you.